In this week's video, we're going to be testing a new product. Well, I don't know how new it is actually, but I was contacted by a company called Cactoily. Cactoily. Anyways, uh, they contacted me and said, look, watching your videos and uh, we see you do tests and we see you do a real, you know, layman's term, truthful reviews on things, whether it works, it doesn't work, it, it's great, it's not great or whatever. And we make a water monitor for aquariums and we're very keen to see if they'll work in your pond or your filter or wherever. So if we send one over, will you have a go and see if it works and let us know? I was like, yeah, but I need to tell everybody else about it as well. Yeah, yeah, sure, let's tell everybody about it. I said, it'll be truthful. Yeah, that's fine, tell everybody. So we've got this unit that we're gonna unbox and we're gonna see how, where it will work, where it will fit. Um, it, apparently it does temperature, it does pH, it does salinity. I don't use a lot of salt in mine, so that'll be interesting to see what it comes with there. <laughs> I've forgotten to salt in my pond. Um, so yeah, it monitors a number of different things that you usually find in aquariums. But can we adapt it to work in the pond? Things like temperatures and stuff, I'm always keen on that. So uh, let's get it unboxed and have a look. So yeah, this is the box. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing written on it, didn't even tell me what it is. Uh, it even opens like an iPhone case. Dead slow. Da, 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 da. There we go. So here we go in the box. Um, I've, I've, I, to be honest, I had a look at their at their website. They've got some YouTube videos that they put on. I'll I'll link them below so you can have a look at them uh, and sort of shows you how it works. So it looks like we've got a bit of a, a joiny cable. Um, oh, look at that. This must be the mitt that monitors. Goes in the pond, maybe. This looks like the main monitor bit, so it must have the dial. Again, I've not even turned this on yet. You, you, you've seen this as fresh as I am, uh, straight on the screen. So um, that's them, that's them. Destruction manual. So it looks like it, it, it monitors the pH, temperature, TDS. Do you know what TDS is? Anyway, I'm, I'm not sure what it, I'm not sure to be honest. So we'll have to have a look. Get the stuff out and then uh oh loads of things some little sticky plugs ah really strong magnets so they must go on the back of the unit maybe i think you have to calibrate this so i would say these are the sachets yeah buffer uh buffer powder yeah this is the calibrating stuff so maybe i don't know what you have to do with them we'll have in a minute some more sticky things. I have a funny feeling they go in there. And a power cable. Right, so that's what it looks like. It looks quite trendy actually. It's got a nice, nice little colour screen on it. Loads of buttons to press. I like buttons to press. Press, press, press. Uh, gadgets, look gadgets. So it looks like a bit of a gadget to me that potentially could work in my pond. Um, but I need to know where it's going to go. And I've had a quick look at the manual, and it says it comes pre-calibrated. But I've asked the manufacturer and said, you know, how, how accurate are these? So it's quite accurate, but you can calibrate it again. Just use one of the calibrated pouches for your pH that's in the box. But also, where's it going to go? Because when they sent it over to me, the videos and the information I've looked at with them is obviously it's for an aquarium. So you kind of just hang it. I better be quick. Storm's coming. Uh, <laughs> You have to hang it over your aquarium. Now, first of all, I was thinking about why not I just hang it on the window? So this bit goes in the water and that goes outside and the window is in between. So it sort of sits like this, but this isn't waterproof and it needs a USB-C connection in there. So I've got power outdoors. So for me to be able to use this outdoors, I'd need to have sort of a power source to there, which is no problem. I can get that. That's, that's no major issue for me. I've got lights around the pond. You know, power is there, but then it needs to be waterproof. And on days like today, when it's on and off torrential rain, then I'd have to take this out and put it away. So fitting it to the pond, you know, at the moment we're looking at uh, a, a number of different ways, either fitting it to the window, as you said earlier on, or fitting it to the side. Now it will do that, it will fit, because you get this longer extension leady bit that just gives it that extra bit more length. So if you did, if you were in somewhere that was really dry and you could afford to keep it powered up outside, then yeah, you could, you know, as we're doing here, it will definitely fit over either the window or the side of your pond, because the extension bit. But I don't think I'm going to do that, because I keep saying it's not waterproof. And it, the weather's not looking too good today. It's given rain out. Is it? Yeah. Okay. We need to pack away. I'll pack away. 
It's going to rain in a minute, I know it. Right, <laughs> as you can see, if I come indoors, either I'll get a jet ski and just start jet skiing around the garden. Just <laughs> tell you the weather in the UK at the moment, unreal. It's just like it's rain, it's thunderstorms, it's lovely sun, it's back to rain. It'll be snowing tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know, I'm joking. So I've, I've come indoors, I've come into the man cave. Welcome to my man cave. And uh, we're going to have a, a closer look at the Cactoyoli Aquarium Water Monitor. So, Let's go back to the destruction manual. Um, as, as I said, it does salinity specific gravity. Now, I don't know what that is. I'm gonna have to read up on that when I get into the destructions. Uh, your pH, your temperature, TDS. I don't know what TDS is either. Uh, and EC. I don't know what EC is either. I'll show you, I'm, I'm sure it, when I see it, I'll go, oh, you mean that. Um, and then you've got your function buttons down the bottom. So here, as you can see, you've got your function buttons on the bottom, up and down and OK and all that kind of stuff. And then the unit itself, you just see me trying to faff around in the pond, just for look for a location, really, of, of where it's going to go and how it's going to fit. So I'm gonna, just going to plug it in now so we can have a quick look at the screen, because I've not plugged it in yet. Now, apparently, you're not supposed to turn this on or put power to it unless you've got this unit attached. That's what the destruction said. Now that's quite, look at that, that's not colour screen. You don't usually get colour screens very often, do you? Salinity, percentage, salinity, specific gravity. I don't know what that is yet. I'm gonna have to read on that bit, see what that is. Then you've got your pH reading. Then you've got your um, temperature, water temperature. And then you've got PPM, parts per million of TDS. And then you've got um, your EC. I'm not sure what that is, but it's saying USCM. So it says percentage SG PPM. So I thought that'd be parts per million of whatever that is. And then USCM. I like what I like this colour screen. That is nice. Look at that colour screen. That is really nice. Ah, wait a minute. No, I tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to calibrate it this time because it says here the new product's been calibrated before delivery uh, and can be installed and used directly upon receipt. So I'm not gonna bother calibrating this time. I'm gonna go off and see what happened. But it says you calibrate it every six months or so. So if you've got two of these, you've got like 12 months worth of, uh, of calibration uh, sachets. Right, so I've come away from said pond because I don't think it's gonna work in a pond because you need power to it all the time and it's not waterproof and you've got to plug it in on the base here. So I'm looking more now in the filter system because it's all covered it's, un it's it's dry under there apart from a big tank of water <laughs> called the filter system um so yeah so i'm thinking maybe if i try to if i can find a bay that is deep enough because you you've got a max sort of a max level and i think that's a minimum level that it's supposed to be at so if i can just find a, a bay with with that much depth um which i've probably got in the first and second but the first and second bay is my brushes. Now I have the brushes out once a week. So would I be disturbing things like this unless I plug it to the side, sort of in one of the corners out the way? That's a possibility. I've also put this extension lead thing on it. You get this extender cable as well. So if you want to go further, I've now got sort of a 50 centimeter, is it 50 centimeters? Anyway, I've got a longer, um, blah, 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 blah. I've got, anyway, I've got a longer lead. As you can see, I put the other bit on. So I've just got to find somewhere to put this, but I can still get the power cable. Because the power cable is not that, that long. And the power is over there, but I want to put it over there. And I don't think I'm going to make that length. So let's have a little gander. Right, Ed's in the box. Um, I've turned the, turned the air off, otherwise you won't be able to hear a word I'm saying because of the air blowing away through the media and the jack matting uh, sections. But yeah, my idea is to do I put the unit in in the aerated media? Or will that affect what's happening in case you get media stuck up in the hole? We've got this little hole in the bottom here. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna do that. This isn't deep enough. That's not deep enough, I don't think, so I'm not gonna be able to do it. So I'm looking here. I'm looking there. Up in the corner, out the way. 
I was thinking the last bay because that's perfect for depth you know I've got that's that's literally perfect for depth to monitor the water but my trickle in is in this bay so all of a sudden I've got warmer water potentially in the summer I've got colder water potentially in the winter and I've also got fresher water coming in and affecting the actual pH of the pond so I've got to keep it away from my trickle in trickle out so it's got to be behind that not in front of it so before the trickle in it's got to be before the trickle in so I'm going to go back to the other bays so I was looking at this bay as well what about putting in this bay because it could quite easily go in there but then I'm always moving these around and you know I don't really want to affect the vortex effect even though I've affected with the, the brushes in here you no longer actually get a vortex but I think I'm going to go for this bay right so issue <laughs> issue with this bay is that unit would go there and then this would have to go out here somewhere for me to read and be able to reach it push the buttons and I've reached it right across so ideally it needs to be here so how can I where would this go then I can find this to go in there uh, because these multi bays, you've got, got loads of bays on them, obviously. So, but I'm in, I'm in a little box in the in the gar, in the garden, um, and I'm just wondering where this can go then. Because if that goes there, so if that goes there, then this can go anywhere between there and there. Right, I want to get this thing in and working because I won't play with my new toy. Um, so I'm going to put it in that, that brushes bay in the corner, out the way, so I can mess around bringing brushes in and out. Um, but I'm going to get it fitted now and I'll sort of sit you up here somewhere so you can look down and see what's going on. Right then, turn the air off so you can hear what I'm saying. So first of all, we're going to put this bit in this top right hand corner where I said I was going to get it fitted. So a nice little gap there. Now this little thing at the bottom here, apparently is little, this keeps the probe moist or protected. This thing, so you take that out, just put that to one side, don't want to lose that. And then this, I'm going to fit the little suckers to the back. So that can now fit in that foot, top far corner. Now this end I want here, but I don't want it too near the water because it's not waterproof and I don't want it to fall in. So, so I'm going to use these magnets that they've given me. I'm going to try this out. All right, pull the tape off the back of them. And then this, because I want it to sit there. So whenever I open up, it's going to be there. So just give that a quick clean off. And then again, the magnet's got some sort of sticky on it. Uh, and then this, I'm going to stick there. Nice and solid. Now that will sit on there. Yep. It hasn't going anywhere unless I want it to. I thought while I was here, I might as well see what the results are in a bucket of clean water. So I've taken the unit out, give it a swirl around in some clean water, change the clean water, so I've just got tap water in here now. So let's compare what the tap water is versus the pond water. So this is pond water, and this is tap water. So I've been living with this monitor now for the last few days and yeah I'm quite impressed actually it's dead easy setup uh, as I said earlier if you had an indoor pond or you had a cover over the pond and you can guarantee the out the outdoor the smaller outer unit won't get wet then yeah it's probably better putting it in your pond but it, again you're getting the, the same, same results from your, your filter system you know it's wherever you want to put it so pros and cons cons I haven't really thought of many really apart from just not being waterproof I'll be feeding back everything. I mean, the, the people, Catoli, who produced this, watch my channel, which is fantastic. So thanks ever, ever so much for watching the channel. So pros, the, the benefits of having this unit. 
Um, for me, one of them's cost. You know, I've, I've been costing up if I wanted a, a, an electronic pH monitor, a temperature gauge, a, a TDS, a total dissolved solids, um, and so on. If I sort of added all them up, and bought the different units or bought the units similar to this then they're a lot more expensive um, if you go onto the Cactoli website I'll put all their details below but what they're telling me is that if you are if you're thinking about getting one of these go onto their website order it through them and put in Koi Pond Lifestyle all one word into the order and you'll get 12% discount but I think this is only till about 8th, 8th, of, 8th of August so hurry if you want to get it you know put it in for then because it's only on till 8th of August you get 12% off every penny counts. So overall for me, yeah, cracking little tool. If you wanna make sure that you can keep a, an instant check on your pH, your temperatures, your TDS, you know, and other things, because, you know, it gives you those, those instant results, plus everything around the outside, it gives you a, a continual view on. So, you know, we've always said we need to keep the water stable. So, you know, if, if all any of those perimeters start changing without having to get a test kit out or, you know, taking water out of the pond and dripping it in things and, and waiting for it to work, you've got an instant result there. So for me, yeah, I would recommend this. It seems to crack a little tool. Right, it's starting to rain again. <laughs> We're not getting one of them storms. If you like the video, please like, ding the bell for notifications, share to all your friends, click the little subscribe button here, and this video this week, I have no idea. I'm going to leave it to YouTube to put a video on there. Thanks very much for watching.